This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon TV show, coming soon to screens of all sizes. On the Exxon TV show, we'll investigate UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, demonic possession, psychic phenomenon, angels, lake monsters, Bigfoot, unsolved mysteries, and all subject matter from within the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and much, much more. The Exxon TV Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, www.xzonetv.com, is a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Airplay Media Production. Unwilling to be the government's deadly assassin, gifted psychic Kahara Mitchell went AWOL and ended up buried under rubble in the wake of a great tsunami. She regained consciousness far from Earth on the medical ship of a Dagaronian intergalactic fleet. Has she been rescued or abducted by aliens? The Chalice of Carrie, Kahira O'Donnell's latest paranormal science fiction romance, is the passionate story of an Earth woman and her destined mates, twin kings from another galaxy. Kahara uses her gifts fighting alongside Lords Rom and Ra in a war that will determine the destiny of galaxies. The Chalice of Kari by Kahira O'Donnell is now available at kahiraodonnell.com or at amazon.com. Where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell. We're coming to you live and around the world on the Starcom Radio Network from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll-free, 800-610-7035. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And you can listen to the Exxon, 724-365 at www xzoneradiotv.com Don't forget, my buddy Ed Till's show, Monday through Friday from 9 until 5 p.m. on Starcom Radio and Real Music Weekends all live including, including all right, I know you're saying, including what Rob? Including the x Radio Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell Monday through Friday starting at 9 p.m. on the Starcom Radio Network. Listen to this, Exxon Nation. There is a major event happening in Brantford, Ontario, June 26, 27, 28. That is when Joanna and Heather have planned their Alien Cosmic Expo. It's going to be big. It's going to be fantastic. We, we've had oh, several of the speakers on the Exxon tonight and Monday night and Tuesday night because we want you to understand the quality of of speaker that's going to be there. We want to get you so interested 
that you're going to say, well, Rob, how do we get there? It's very simple. Just go to www.aliencosmicexpo.com. All the information that you'll need to know about this Canadian event of Canadian events. Once again, that's www.aliencosmicexpo.com. In fact, my guest this hour, Sandy Mack, is going to be at the Alien Cosmic Expo. And uh, Sandy's going to be talking about alien contact, a multidimensional perspective and approach. Now, joining me from the high levels of Arizona is Sandy Mack. And Sandy, welcome to the X-Zone. Thank you so much. I'm delighted to be with you folks this evening. Sandy, it's great having you with us. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Sandy. What got you on your quest? What What was it that happened to Sandy Mack that you now want to share with the world what's going on, what the truth is, what has happened? Well, my background's in mental health, and I worked for several years in a psychiatric facility in northern Wisconsin. I kind of grew up and went to school in Texas and um, have degrees in criminology and fine arts. Therefore, I'm fully qualified to do anything. Right. And... Um, I worked in this mental hospital, and I found out that the medical model in that facility and in that whole arena doesn't work very well, just to keep people drugged up and locked up and straitjackets and all the rest of the crazy stuff. So after four years, I gave notice of the cold weather and um, set out on a search to try and find things that could genuinely and really and truly help people. One of the things that I learned to do was um, hypnosis. Mm -hmm. And I also trained with a man named Dick Sutphin, who was the man who originally in the 70s developed a system of being able to do past life regression with hypnosis. So I used to do, I still do, a lot of work with past life work. In fact, I've been written about in a couple of books and things like that, some of my cases. Mm -hmm. And um, I had always been aware of UFO contact. I actually grew up in a, in a family that was fairly open spiritually, so my dad was kind of like a metaphysical ouchie bunker, if you can imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they had taken some of mind control, uh-huh. and they were reading Edgar Casey back in the 50s. So they were very open, and I remember about the case for Bridie Murphy and all that. So mm-hmm. I did not have a problem believing that we had visitors from other places and um, and never had a direct experience myself. But I started work with my hypnosis with a lot of people who had been contacted. Now, a lot of them were not so good, but acknowledged people didn't come to see me uh, therapeutically because they had a fabulous experience. They came because they had been traumatized or really had some strange and unusual pleasant things occur. Sandy, <laughs> Sandy we're having problems. Uh, you, you keep breaking up on us. So can you repeat what you just said? Uh, how much of it? Uh, you, you, are you on a cell phone by any chance? I am. It's the only one I've got here. Okay, because you, you keep breaking up, honey. So um, when you were last talking, you were talking about uh, what we last heard was you were talking about your experiences with past life reg- regression and and how you studied with who you studied. And so take it from there. Yes, okay. So I had learned to do past life regression and studied with the man who developed uh, one of the ways of doing that was all right, Sandy. We're going to have to take a break, and we'll see if our engineers can help us to try and solve how we can solve this problem with you. Please stand by, Exo Nation. Uh, my guest this hour is um, Sandy Mack, and I apologize to all the members of the Exo Nation for the problems we're encountering. This is what happens with cell phones, especially when you're in the remote areas of which Sandy is. We'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we continue here in the X-Zone with yours truly, Rob McConnell. Don't go away. The Alien Conference 
Cosmic Expo will be held in Brantford, Ontario, June 26, 27, 28, and will feature 24 internationally acclaimed experts and researchers of UFOs, crop circles, alien abductions, and much more in this three-day 2015 summer Canadian event. Experts in the field of extraterrestrials and alien encounters, out-of-body experiences, past life regression, soul reading, psychic and mediumship will all be presented with professionalism, integrity and credibility, making the Alien Cosmic Expo the largest event of its kind in Canada for 2015. The Exhibitor Hall will feature a spectacular lineup of gifted mediums, psychics, astrologers, channelers, aura photography, healers, as well as books, DVDs, alternative health products, crystals, jewelry, and much more completing the venue with something for everyone. For all information and to purchase your tickets for the Alien Cosmic Expo, go to www.aliencosmicexpo.com. That's www.aliencosmicexpo.com. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God, it was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon TV show, coming soon to screens of all sizes. On the Exxon TV show, we'll investigate UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, demonic possession, psychic phenomenon, angels, lake monsters, Bigfoot, unsolved mysteries, and all subject matter from within the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology, and much, much more. The Exxon TV Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, www.xzonetv.com, is a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Airplay Media Production. Hi, this is Eric Rawls of Cosmoverse.com, and you're listening to Rob McConnell in the Exxon. Hi, this is Blade Runner, and you are listening to Canada's number one paranormal radio show, The X Zone, with Rob McConnell. Hi, I'm Laura Sabrin of Cease to Fields Organic Vineyards in Jordan, and you're listening to Canada's number one paranormal radio show, The X Zone, with Rob McConnell. Hi, my name is Lady Ashley, the White Witch of Niagara on the Lake, and you're listening to Canada's number one paranormal talk radio show, The X Zone, with Rob McConnell. Welcome to The X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. We do have uh, Sandy Mack back with us. Sandy, great having you back with us. Uh, could you just can you just uh, go over what you were saying about the um, the hypnosis that you use? And how you started to use hypnosis in in your investigation and in your research into the UFO phenomenon? Yes, I was trained to do, um, amongst other hypnosis, but I was particularly trained by the man who developed using it for past life regression. So I had a large clientele working with that, and then more and more often I would run into people, or they would come to me, 
that had some real unexplained things, and often they had been contacted, UFO abductees or contactees, I guess is the politically correct term now. Mm -hmm. Now, I acknowledge that there are certainly some people that have had some excellent experiences, but there's also some people that have had some very traumatic and upsetting and debilitating experiences. And um, so those are the ones that I had more contact with. And so I was using my hypnosis to be able to work with these people to deal with some of the trauma and the after effects, et cetera, that came as a result of them being um, abducted. So we what's happened is that I've developed a protocol after several years of working with that, which is part of what I'm going to be sharing at this incredible conference coming up next month. Are, what is your protocol? Well, it's a combination of many things, and I have never um, – uh, never seen this with anybody else. So I'm working with a lot of the tools that I have in my other toolkit, which mm -hmm. is uh, hypnosis, right? Uh, neuro linguistic programming. If you're familiar with NLP, sure. yeah. Um, working with spiritual uh, spiritual law or higher law. Uh, working with some of the angelic realms, and like in NLP, setting up, for example, double bind situations. So it's like you can't not do or say or have or be something. For example. Right. And um, and so I've combined many of these things in a unique way, and I'm really the only person that I know that does it in this way. So literally what I do is working with someone in altered state, in hypnosis, I actually go up into the ships where they were uh, taken or energetically taken, however you perceive that, and break the connection, find out what happened, and clear some of the things from there. What are the ships like? They vary tremendously. Some of them are the classic flying saucer-looking things. Some mm -hmm. of them are cigar-shaped. Right. Some of them are really small. They only have one or two uh, beings on them, and they're sort of like little ships that are associated with a much larger mothership. Uh, some of these things are huge. I mean, they're like the size of a planet. They're huge, and they vary. Some of them have light. Some of them don't. Um, I usually take people into the part of the ship where the data or the information is stored and start working from there. Can you share with us, without breaking any confidentiality to the people that you've dealt with, some of the experiences that you've been told about? Uh, you mean in terms of clientele, of yes. things that have happened? things that have happened. Sure, absolutely. Um, Sometimes people, one of the things that I've noticed is that some people have phobias, and that may be relate to that. Sometimes they have a phobia of needles, and hmm. that may relate to that. And so um, I, let me, th let me think of a recent one. Okay, I've got one that I worked with recently. This person had a uh, low-level fever. She was exhausted. She was not... Um, but sleeping, you know, like 18 hours a day or something. She'd been to the doctor. She'd been on a course of antibiotics for several weeks, and nobody could quite figure out what it was. And um, I'm able to do this remotely as well as in person. I'm also a dowser, if you know what a dowser is. Yep. So I'm able to um, uh, use dowsing to do some evaluation uh, about things, and that's what I doused is that there had been – she had been contacted – and actually had been interfered with by some uh, extraterrestrial beings that were not necessarily operating in her highest and best good. D so I uh, took her up. Mm -hmm. We went into the ships. We cleared it. I always check to see how many species there were because there's a multitude of species. And uh, there were two different species affecting this person. And we cleared them out and took her to another realm to be able to do some healing. Uh, another thing that I check for is implants, if there's implants. And I broadened the, range, the, the phrase to include microchips, implants, um, devices, enhancers, anything uh, like that. And there's ways to remove those as well. And my basic theory on that, my thinking of that is quite simple. God doesn't need to put any beepers in us to keep track of us. <laughs> <laughs> So I consider, yeah. I mean, I know it's controversial, my opinion, but I consider implants and things a violation of the spiritual law. I think we have a divine template and a divine blueprint 
It is just fine. Thank you very much. <laughs> How many different species of extraterrestrials uh, do you believe are visiting this planet? Oh, my goodness. I've heard such a variance of numbers. I would say there's at least 75 or 100 or more. I don't know. There's certain kinds that show up more frequently, of course, the little mm-hmm. grays, uh, the reptilians, which can be pretty scary, and sometimes they're on the same ships. The ones that look like praying mantis things, um, those show up fairly often. And, I mean, it, I imagine it's kind of like the bar scene in Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what it sounds like when, when certain people tell me about their experiences or or what it, it, and it makes me wonder how many of these these cases are real and not subliminal well what is you know? what is real i mean let's let's take a look at that for yeah, a minute okay. what is reality well reality for me is what i have to do to pay my bills to keep my family fed to keep okay. my family safe uh to do what i do in order to keep the people at all the networks we're on very happy my okay. my colleagues, my employees, my staff. Uh, okay. The day to day, we must do is because in reality, we have to eat, we have to pay our bills. Absolutely. You know. So this is my interpretation of reality. When I look up in the sky and I see a seven forty seven, that's reality. When I look up in the sky and I see a cloud, to me, that's reality. So that's my interpretation of reality. Great, great. Well, I would say my experience is the reality is partly our perception of it. Okay. Because if you really take something, let's say Mm -hmm. your hand, and you look at it closely, you would recognize it. But if you put it under a microscope, it's going to look like little cells and tissues and a smaller microscope. Mm -hmm. It's going to look like little little molecules floating around. And a subatomic microscope, it's going to go even smaller. Sure. So at some point, you're dealing with subatomic particles. So then you wouldn't even be able to recognize your hand from, let's say, the television set or uh, the car, because everything is energy at some level. So what I've had to learn, and it's been a much more, I'm not going to say this is right or wrong or Mm -hmm. good or bad. I don't find those very useful terms. What I would say has been more useful for me because I got into this from a therapeutic perspective, is when I was working, for example, primarily with past life regression, if the person came in with a problem, let's say they had a fear of water, and they had had, uh, a chronic fear or phobia, they've had it for many years, and they go back and ask their mother, hey, did somebody hold me down in the swimming pool a long time ago or something? Why have I got this fear of water? There's no reasonably logical reason why they would have that, that fear or phobia of water. But if we go to another lifetime and we found that they drowned in one or two lifetimes and we clear that out, and there's ways of doing that, and then the person doesn't have the fear anymore, I go, what difference does it make? Was it real? Was it not real? Because from a therapeutic perspective, the problem has been solved. Because I used to argue myself, just like you're saying, is it real? Is it mm-hmm. not real? Did they make this up? You know, are they hallucinating? Are they crazy? Are they imagining? Is it the brainwave something? I mean, I just would drive myself crazy. And so now I just go, okay, is this useful because it helps the person? Does it answer some questions? Does it solve some problems? Does it release trauma? Can they um, get a decent night's sleep now or whatever the, the presenting situation was? So basically, whether or not it is real, the problem has been solved. Case closed. Sure. Gotcha. Sure. Gotcha. And when but, you start listening to these mm-hmm. stories, and I've certainly been involved in much of the UFO communities for many, many, many years. Right. I've gone to attended multiple conferences, etc. I've just never presented any of my material uh, at them in a public format. Um, I see such a repetition of patterns and stories that you got to go, well, either all these people are crazy or there's something of some validity here. Mm-hmm. So where do you draw the line between those who have a psycho somatic problem that can be solved simply by taking them to a ship that 
is there or isn't there compared to the person who has the real experience? Well, again, how do we say what's real? I mean, how do we how do we determine that? Well, let me give you an example. If somebody comes back with scarring, scoop marks, physical, um, yeah, I understand. You know, physical problems to their body that were not there the day before that can be documented. There is a right. loss of time and, and so on and so forth. You know, you, it's it's hard to dispute the fact that something did happen to this person. So do we take absolutely? But usually those are the people that do come to me. There are some, and it's not always extremely obvious. For example, with this person that I just spoke of, Mm -hmm. that had had a chronic infection for several weeks, been to doctors, I think been to some other alternative practitioners. This person is actually a healer uh, themselves and tried everything they knew. And everybody kept saying there's something else going on, but we can't get to the bottom of it. All right, we're the going to have to have a cliff- it's dramatically healed. All right, we have to ha- different. we have to have a cliffhanger here. Please stand by. I've got to take my news break at the bottom of the hour. This is the X Zone on the Starcom Radio Network. My name is Rob McConnell. We'll be back after the news. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, on the Exxon TV show, coming soon to screens of all sizes. On the Exxon TV show, we'll investigate UFOs, ghosts, alien abductions, demonic possession, psychic phenomenon, angels, lake monsters, Bigfoot, unsolved mysteries, and all subject matter from within the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology and much, much more. The Exxon TV Show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, www.xzonetv.com, is a Relmar McConnell Media Company and Airplay Media Production. Little children aren't the only ones afraid of the dark. Millions of soldiers return from war zones with PTSD, anger, frustration, fear, and loneliness, much of which surfaces during the darkness of the night. You have the chance to change the lives of these American heroes. Songs and Stories for Soldiers.us provides free MP3 players for these men and women. With a list of 3 million songs in 16 different styles, 100,000 audiobooks, and 30,000 old-time radio programs, every veteran can find something to soothe and comfort them at no cost. All our players contain an 8-hour audio program designed to help veterans fall asleep. With 1,500 plus vets now participating, it's our goal to deliver 10,000 audio players this year. Go to our website at Songs and Stories for Soul. Soldiers.us. Help us help a veteran make it through the night. With each new extreme weather event or terrorist act, it becomes increasingly obvious that we live in uncertain and challenging times. We all buy car insurance. Why not collapse and catastrophe insurance? Matthew Stein, an MIT-trained engineer and green builder, has written two outstanding books to help people prepare, plan for, and deal with everything from minor situations lasting a few days to full-on collapse. Matt's first book, When Technology Fails, is a manual for self-reliance, sustainable living, and surviving the long emergency. This massive book covers the gamut from first aid and emergency preparedness to alternative healing, renewable energy, primitive living skills, and 18th century technologies that could be critical to your comfort and survival in a long-lasting crisis. Matt's second book, When Disaster Strikes, is a comprehensive emergency preparedness handbook and survival guide. When Disaster Strikes is an essential item for every family's go-bag. Both books are available at all usual sources. There's a wealth of totally free information posted at whentechfails.com and author signed copies may be purchased at mattstein.com. That's www. 
WhenTechFails.com and www.matstein.com. Elliot, when I'm floating around the universe, I always try to tune in to Rob McCall. Hey, hold there, Trinity Frog on Sesame Street. When I want to find out what's going on with UFOs or ghosts, I listen to the X Zone with Rob McConnell. This is Les Corrigan from Target Internet Development. You're listening to Rob McConnell on the X Zone Radio Show. This is John Hogue, Prophecy Scholar, and you're listening to Rob McConnell in the X Zone. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back to the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and around the world on the Starcom Radio Network. Worldwide toll free, 800 610 7035. My email address is exxon at exxonradiotv.com. On all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. And you can listen to the Exxon 724-365 at www.exxonradiotv.com. June 26, 2728, Brantford, Ontario is going to be the place to be when it comes to finding out what is going on within the world of the paranormal and parapsychologies. There's going to be 24 of the world's leading experts, including my, hour, my guest this hour, Sandy Mack, there's going to be dowsers, there's going to be experiencers, there are going to be researchers, investigators, people from within the world of this very interesting genre, including icons like Stanton T. Friedman, the grandfather of ufology himself will be there, Michael Horn, another great, and you know what? I know what I'm talking about with these two guys. I've had them on the show many times. They're the real McCoy, just like Sandy Mack is. And Sandy, it's great having you here with us. And uh, before we get back to Sandy, let's just tell all our listeners that for all the information they need about the Alien Cosmic Expo, all they have to do is go to aliencosmicexpo.com. All right, Sandy. Um, when it comes to the... the um, the, I, I want to phrase this the right way, the abduction of people. Okay. Why are people being abducted? If these ETs are, are, are not posing a threat, like some people say, other people say they do, but let's, let's look at the positive aspect. If they pose no threat and they're benevolent, why do they need to abduct these people? Well, I would say that's almost a contradiction. <laughs> it's like uh, if people are essentially good, why are there people murdering people? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And if these are, I think it's. A, I think there's an entire spectrum of extraterrestrials or exopolitics or whatever, mm -hmm. and it ranges from some really yucky stuff to some extremely very caring, very benevolent, very highly develop spiritual beings that are here trying to assist us for our greater good and there's here that probably some that want us for lunch okay so i think it covers the whole spectrum speaking about the entire spectrum sandy what you do is the entire spectrum of of what we talk about here on the show you, you you do it you're into angels you're into dowsing you're into nlp you know why did you decide to use all these different um, modalities to do the work that you do? Well, I, um, like I said, my background was in mental health, mm -hmm. and I found out that wasn't a very useful technique to help people make change. Really? Or certainly to give them uh, long-term stability mm -hmm. if they've been struggling with uh, challenges. And I think a lot of people that were locked up in mental hospitals were not really crazy, if you want to use a more generic term. 
they were um, very sensitive people. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are partway in and out of different dimensions. Uh, some of them are very psychic, uh, and they all got lumped together and in many cases locked away or certainly drugged heavily with psychotropic drugs, etc. I mean, historically, um, people have been afraid of people that were really different, except for perhaps some indigenous cultures, which uh, would notice these people and in some cases groom them to be medicine people or uh, shamans or things like that. But I use, I mean, this is not the only work I do. I do mm -hmm. many other kinds of work. But I set out to find systems and works and protocols and models that would help people make change in a relatively short, simple way that didn't take a long time, it wasn't very expensive, and they could have long-term stable results. And when I yeah. started um, finding more people um, that had been abducted or mm -hmm. had uh, chronic situations, like one of the things that I found is that many, not all, but many people that suffer from uh, unexplained panic attacks have been actually uh, taken up in the ships or contacted. That sounds rather bizarre. Well, in a way it does, but, you know, Rob, in a way it doesn't, because they're panicking, but because they can't remember anything, and because there's no logical reason mm -hmm. on the earth plane why, it's not like, oh, they were in an elevator, got stuck, and now they're afraid of elevators. There's, there's this unexplained panic that mm -hmm. there's no explanation for. And sometimes, again, emphasizing it's not true all the time, sometimes it's because something happened to them that was very real at some level that traumatized them or terrorized them or scared them or whatever. Another thing that I found is that often these contactees uh, have been contacted since childhood, mm -hmm. sometimes even in utero, and that on another pattern that I've definitively noticed over, certainly over 30 years of working with this, is that often runs in families. Really? Yeah. Is it, is One or it... more of the parents may have been contacted, or the grandparents, mm -hmm. or this goes on. And even sometimes from other lifetimes, they've been contacted multiple lifetimes. So it's like they've been observed or monitored or followed or, you know, whatever, pinpointed for possibly hundreds of years. As a, as a former health professional, mental health professional, do you do psychological buildups on these people to find out whether or not they're a Section 8 or they're actually having a real event? A Section 8? Uh, that must be a Canadian. A Section uh, 8 doesn't mean they're mentally disturbed. Oh. Or wait a um, sec, wait a I sec, wait a sec. I have to, re no, mentally challenged. Mentally challenged, okay. <laughs> I do uh, a workup in the beginning, mm -hmm. uh, maybe not. Uh, according to the psychological association or something. But I do ask a lot of questions, and I do my best to determine if there really is a uh, serious disturbance. And I, because I, I'm uh, skilled in NLP and a lot of other systems, I can usually ascertain. And occasionally there are some people, occasionally, and I do mm -hmm. encourage them to, you know, do some other work with these kinds of things. But most of these people are pretty sane, regular kind of people. Yeah. But I will often ask them if they've had a missing time experience, if they've ever had a, a real interest, like I'm not going to say an obsession, but say a heightened interest in extraterrestrials or UFOs. And they go, well, yeah, I used to see these lights all the time. Or my mom said when I was a little kid something happened. Mm -hmm. and and I would go sit out and I'd look at the stars or something came to the window and they couldn't see anything, but I was always frightened after that. So so nearly always there'll be something that will be a clue that earlier or um, somewhere else in their life there was something that pointed to the possibility of at ex least exploring that as an option. How many cases have you come across where after your initial interview you've decided, no, this person does not fit the criteria. 
not fit the criteria for working with them, you mean? Yes. Or for yeah. exploring? Oh, I'd say in 30 years, probably less than 10 or 15. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Most people that, I mean, most people that come for that, um, and some people come for something else, they may not even realize that that's what it is. Now, I want to be real clear that this is not the majority of the work that I do. I do a lot of other kinds of work, so Mm -hmm. I'm not... Everybody that walks through the door or contacts me on the phone because I do a lot of remote work, I don't automatically go, oh, I bet the ETs have gotcha or right, something gotcha, like yeah. that. I don't do that. I don't do that at all. But I do check for a variety of other things. And um, if this ends up being something that has been an issue, then we go deal with it. So what do you believe, Sandy, is really happening within the abductee, contactee, experiencer phenomenon? I think um, it's a multidimensional um, phenomena. It, it includes more than one dimension. Mm-hmm. I think that, like I said before, that it's an entire range or spectrum from beneficial and helpful to very, um, very traumatic in some cases, Um I've found people that have been used for, uh, it's fairly common to know that sometimes people are used for uh, hybridization experiments, et cetera. They've taken samples of DNA and body tissue, et cetera. Um, I know that sometimes people have been interfered with because they could be in the public eye or they're in a position to interfere with other people. And the, the, con- the UFO or the mm-hmm. ET contactee has not contactee, but the UFO being has um, perhaps implanted them or used some type of mental thing so that they will then at certain times be able to affect other people. I've also seen a pattern where sometimes um, they will activate or enhance certain negative emotions like anger or rage or something like that. And I believe that some of these uh, beings actually live or um, use those frequencies of the negative emotions. And so they can trigger and activate that with people, with certain people, because they are using that energy. So it really, from a stepping back in Mm -hmm. an observer position, from a psychological perspective, it really runs a whole range, a whole gamut. What do you think should be done on a larger scale when it comes to helping these people who've had either a real experience or an experience that they believe that actually did not happen, but they believe it did? Right. Well, the first thing, from my perspective, is to get them some relief, Mm -hmm. especially if it was traumatic. Get them some relief. Get them um, some help with that, relieve some of the trauma, get them information so they can understand what was going on, why it was going on, when it happened, did it happen over multiple periods of time, when did it start, you know, I'll often douse and say, when was the first contact made, or when was the first abduction made? And I'll say, okay, something happened at three years old, do you remember anything? Well, maybe you, maybe their mom said they started having nightmares. Well, when was the first contact? Maybe it was at 5 o'clock, and he goes, you know, I was out in the woods, and, you know, I was gone for a while, and they were really nervous, and they called the sheriff, and all of a sudden I was back again. Mm-hmm. So, you know, without knowing the details, I'm often able to douse the age when things occur right. and get information like that. Yeah. You know, the great, the great parapsychologist, uh, Dr. Hans Holzer, in his yeah. many years of research, was able to make a connection between child abuse, sexual abuse, and those making claims of the paranormal uh, poltergeist and, and other acts of the the paranormal that were all a cause. I'm sorry, that were all caused by the sexual abuse of the child at a very early age. 
And I'm just wondering how this fits into the scenario, and do you agree with this or disagree with this? I think there's something to that, because what I think is when someone is abused Mm -hmm. brutally, uh, physically, or sexual abuse, I think the spirit of that person actually, to some extent, not completely, obviously, or they'd be dead, disassociates, or they end up with MPD, disassociates from that person, and there is a vulnerability in their aura or their energy field that they could be uh, contacted or interfered with by other beings, not necessarily all extraterrestrials. There's also dark forces. There's also discarded entities. And it, to me, where I, the way I look at it, Rob, is it's a, it's a <clears throat> pattern of resonant frequency. Mm-hmm. So if someone is, is vibrating at a frequency of depression or sadness, they will be able to energetically attract or match uh, an entity or something else of depression or sadness. If it's of anger, that's the kind of frequency they're putting out, and that frequency resonates and matches up. So basically, you reap what you sow. Yes, you reap what you sow, but if there was trauma, early childhood trauma, Mm -hmm. that weakened the energy field, put holes in the aura, and people that can see clairvoyantly can see this very, very clearly. When there's holes in the aura or the energy field, they mm-hmm. are much more vulnerable. And lots of things can do that. Abuse can do it. Trauma can do it. Drugs and alcohol, drugs yeah. any kind, including sure. antibiotics. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, those types of things can all damage the energy field where the person is much more vulnerable. It's like they're walking around with an aura made out of Swiss cheese with holes in it. Sandy, you and I have to take our final break for this hour. Please stand by. Exonation. Sandy Mack is my very special guest. And uh, Sandy and I will be back on the other side of this short commercial break as we wrap up this edition of the Exxon live and around the world on the Starcom Radio Network. My name is Rob McConnell. We'll be back shortly. Don't go away. someone told you you could live to be 120 would you believe him what if he told you the bible guaranteed it all you needed to do was follow his rules and buy his products would you do it what if you invested 20 years of your life in him what if he tested his substances on your child what if your child became brain damaged as a result Meet Dr. Tyler Belknap, a fast-talking Texas admin turned health guru. At the helm of a vast health food and supplement empire, he has established himself as the authority on nutrition and longevity. But what his followers don't know is that his products are laced with bizarre psychoactive substances from genetically modified plants developed in his very own secret lab. No wonder his customers can't stop using them. Tyler Belknap will stop at nothing to keep his edge in the market even if it means experimenting on children. Chasing 120, a story of food, faith, fraud, and the pursuit of longevity, a novel from the pen of political cartoonist Monty Wolverton, is an easy and entertaining read full of rich characters and intrigue. It hits home in a world filled with all kind of hucksterism and offers a glimpse of what can happen when GMO technology falls into the wrong hands. Chasing 120 by Monty Wolverton. Get your copy today at www.ptm.org forward slash 120 or on Amazon.com. When demystified, shamanism is an ancient science delving into the quantum level of life. Understanding and implementing basic shamanic principles can empower the individual to heal, manifest, and evolve in these rapidly changing times. Path Home Shamanic Art School is a -a one-of-a-kind Colorado State certified occupational school training and certifying shamanic practitioners and teachers. We also train individuals simply interested in empowering and enriching their lives through shamanism. 
Path Homes certification classes are in a week-long block format, enabling national and international students to participate. We also provide online classes and long-distance shamanic healing sessions as well. Discover all you can be. Enter the limitless world of shamanism today. For more information, visit findyourpathhome.com or call 303-775-3431. Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnix, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, Facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the word of God. Love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. My name is Michael Kalsar, Canada's leading mentalist from Toronto, Ontario. Hi, my name is Florida, and you're listening to my dad, Ron McConnell, on the XM. This is Psychic Dorothy from St. Catharines, and you're listening to Rob McConnell. Hello, my name is Holly Reeves, an astrologer from astro for You, and you're listening to Canada's number one paranormal radio show, The X Zone, with Rob McConnell. Welcome to The X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. Welcome back, everyone. This is The Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. We're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and around the world on the Starcom Radio Network. Don't forget my buddy Ed Till's show, Monday through Friday from 9, and, 9 in the morning until 5 in the afternoon on the Starcom Radio Network. We are on Starcom live Monday through Friday starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. And then Real Music, Real Music Weekend. You've got to check it out if you love music right here on Starcom. You can listen to us on any of the me- any of the cities where we have broadcast affiliates or online at www.starcomradionetwork.com. My guest this hour is Sandy Mack. And first of all, Sandy, I want to thank you so much for joining us. It's been a great pleasure talking to you this hour. Thank you so much, Rob. I'm just delighted about your show. And, Thanks, dear. You know, I'm actually on both sides. Um, my ancestors were all Canadian and French and Scots, so I feel that area up there is, is just kind of like my ancestral home. So I'm just delighted to be with you and your people. Well, you know what? You're going to be coming to your ancestral home on the 26th, 27th, and 28th of June because you're one of the great speakers at the Alien Expo conference that's being held in Branford. And Exonation, all you have to do to get all the information is go to aliencosmicexpo.com. Sandy, what are you going to be talking about when you're up here in Canada at the Alien Cosmic Expo? Well, I'm going to be sharing some of the information that I've noticed with these patterns for the last 30-some years. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be actually doing a live hypnosis session on stage where I will actually demonstrate my protocol. I've never seen this done before. I used to try and speak with people like Bud Hopkins and Mm -hmm. Dr. Edith Fiore about this, and I think they thought I was a little crazy, but I go, look, I'm telling you, this stuff really works. So I'm going to be demonstrating this in public for the very first time. We've got less than two minutes, uh, Sandy. What I'd like you to do right now is... Tell the members of the Exo Nation around the world what they can do if they believe that they too have been subjected to something by an alien force. And that has been confusing their life, making a mess of it, you know, just just screwing with them mentally. What can they do? Right. They could, um, if they know how to douse or do muscle testing, they could do that. Mm -hmm. They could meet with a professional that deals with such things. 
Um, they're certainly welcome to get in contact with me. It doesn't mean that I have to do any work with them, but they're willing. They're, they could contact me through my website, which is designandudestiny.com, um, or um, they could have another professional double check that has some familiarity with these things to see if that's a possibility of something that occurred with them. Wow. Hey, time has gone by so fast. Love to have you back on in the future, Sandy. Looking forward to meeting you uh, when you're up here on June 26, 27, 28. So until then, Sandy, take care of yourself, and thank you so much for being part of the x tonight. Thanks, Rob. I really appreciate it. My so pleasure. Grateful. You take care of yourself, sweetheart. Thank you. Exxon Nation, Sandy Mack, our guest. Her website, once again, is Design a New Destiny. Dot com. Well, that's it for tonight, Exo Nation. I'll be back tomorrow night at 8 o'clock Eastern, right here on the Starcom Radio Network, as once again we cross the time-space continuum to this place that we call the Exxon. From everyone here to everyone out there and beyond, remember, always keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. Good night, everyone. <laughs>